This is going to be the first video in a series of videos I plan on making about plumbing, drain, and vent connections, what might or might not work, and what might or might not be approved by your local building department. So let's go ahead and get started with a setup that will probably work just fine. I don't think you would ever have any problems with it. However, it does not meet most of the building codes from the main building code books. And the reason for that is because this section right here crosses over or goes through the upper section of the wet vent. So we have a wet vent going from here to here, and this wet vent is serving the shower and the toilet. So we have a wet vent here going to the sink and then a dry vent going through the roof. And then the water, of course, is gonna be draining down this way. And of course, one of the reasons why I'm going to be making these videos will be to allow do-it-yourselfers and plumbers to chime in. Just keep in mind that some plumbers or do-it-yourselfers might be providing you with the wrong information. Trust me, I've already had that happen more than once. And as long as the information someone is providing you with can be backed up or supported by some type of building code reference number, then you should definitely pay attention. So in case I didn't make myself clear, the water coming out of the toilet is going to come down here and run through the upper section of the pipes. And in order for a wet vent to work properly, the upper section of the pipes should not have any water running through it or blocking or restricting the vent airflow. So to fix this, all we would need to do would be to rotate the fitting 90 degrees to where it will enter from the side. And hopefully by the time it gets here, it will not be entering into the upper part of the wet vented system. And another thing that I did here was put a reducer on so that the water from here will slope down here and then run through the pipe. In the previous example, I was using a flush bushing reducer that wouldn't allow a smooth transfer from one pipe to another like this reducer would. However, I don't know if that will affect your building codes. I haven't came across anything that suggests you can't use either one of the reducer fittings. And of course, if you can't rotate the combo fitting for the toilet, then something like this will work also to where we have the dry vent coming down to the sink, the wet vent going through here and stopping right here to vent the toilet and the shower. And since you're allowed to have one fixture coming off of the back of the wet vent, then something like this should work. And then, of course, the wet vent will be servicing the shower. Just make sure that if you're using a two inch pipe, for your shower drain, which is usually the minimum requirement, that you cannot be longer than eight feet from the trap to the double Y connection. And a similar setup to this one right here is actually what motivated me to make the video series because this didn't look right. Next up, let me see if I can provide you with a better explanation of how the water would basically be flushing out of a toilet and then dropping in from above and basically running through the upper part of the wet vented section and blocking it temporarily. So this one right here isn't going to work. However, this one will. And I realize this looks exactly the same as the other one, but it isn't because this one here is actually this one over here. Remember how the toilet drained into a long 90, came down here, and then connected to the drain pipe with a combo fitting. And hopefully with this example and the square pipes, I'm gonna be able to make my point. If not, let me know if you're having a problem or let me know that it actually made sense because this is a difficult thing for even plumbers with years of experience to wrap their mind around. And trust me, I've been in the business for 40 years as a general contractor and it just recently started to make sense to me so that's why I'm trying to share it with you so that you can better understand how a wet vent works so again the water is going to travel down below the upper section allowing air to travel in the upper section of your pipe so as long as the upper section of the pipe is unobstructed the water is going to flow right through here without any problems, or I should say hopefully without any problems. You could have a clog somewhere. And when the water is coming through the shower, it should also occupy the lower half of the pipe. Again, allowing the air that we're gonna use to keep the water flowing with our wet vent to occupy the upper area. 
And if that makes sense, we can go ahead and add our sink drain or the wet vent that is connecting to the side of the pipe here and leading up to the sink and then through a dry vent the rest of the way through the roof. So this is where we're going to be getting our air from. So as the water drains in this direction, it's going to pull air from this pipe here. It's going to pull any air it needs from the dry vent above the sink to allow the water to keep flowing. So if we didn't have a vent here and all we had was a drain going to the shower and a drain going to the toilet, every time we flush the toilet, it's going to be looking for air and trying to suck the air out of the shower trap. And then when we run the shower, the shower is going to be looking for air. It's going to want to try and pull the air out of the toilet. And if it can't pull air from the toilet, it's going to be pulling all the air it needs through the shower drain. And this will create obstacles in the drain pipe, forcing the water to move slower. And let's go ahead and wrap this video up by providing you with a couple of more things that you might need to know about this situation. Now, if I move this forward and use this as a wet vent setup, I'm going to have two fixtures behind the connection, and that's not going to make the inspector happy. Where with this setup here, we're back to having one fixture coming off and then one connecting to the same spot that the wet vent is connecting to. And if I was going to move the shower in front of the sink drain, then I might be breaking another building code. And that would be the fact that the toilet needs to be the furthest fixture downstream of the wet vent. And that wouldn't be the case here, where the shower is now the furthest fixture downstream connecting to the wet vent. Again, something that might not work with your local building codes. And if I wanted to do a setup like this, where I have a dry vent coming off of the toilet arm and providing us with a little more air for our wet vent system, suggesting that the wet vent would now go from here to here or from here to here, again, creating a possible problem for the shower being the furthest fixture downstream or the sink connection, whichever way you look at it. And let's go ahead and zoom in on this or provide you with a couple of different perspectives along with the possibility that this might be your only option because of the way the floor framing joists are laid out and whether or not you can bring this vent up into a wall. And even though I drew this in and it might work, I think this situation will work better. And I'm not about to suggest you need to bring this this far down. You could always move it closer to the toilet or the sweep or short sweep connector. And the reason why I think this is going to work better is because now we're back to the toilet being the farthest fixture located downstream. And if there was ever any water to rush through the toilet, at a force that somehow could create enough suction to pull the water out of the shower trap. It probably won't happen now because we have a vent here. So something like this is going to work a little bit better and I don't see any problem with this being approved by your local building department. And of course, all of this will depend upon whether or not you're gonna be able to vent through the wall framing or somehow vent through the floor framing and then vent through the wall framing.